my lord welcome back youtube um, um withering waves uh, better than genshin um odd at all controversial stuff here we have the hide ball to react to chat ah you're on the floor correspondent l has um some of the better takes out there literally based takes and we're going to be looking and reacting towards the hide ball this is our to be fair this is our second time viewing the hide ball so we're going to go through this um, and just skip through the good parts and have my little reactions and my little notes, okay? My little notes I'd like to give during this YouTube presentation. Um, so, first of all, the Heidelbaum was in actual Heidel. They went to France to film this, which is really, really good. Yeah, yeah. So here, first of all, the Heidelbaum opens up with Mr. Inlay. After 10 years of Black Desert and a milestone that could not have been achieved without yeah. the dedication and passion of you, our that is true. We Our are excited passion. to share this moment with you, and we hope you're looking forward to all the things we prepared for yeah, today. Yeah. And so, now I'm sure you've all had enough of you know, talking. You know, is so, looking immaculate. Um, you know, if he, if you know, if he was single and stuff, I might slide to the DMs. You know, um, just saying. Very Join nice, me in a handsome to the fella. Stage, the executive producer of Black Desert, Jay, he, him, and our interpreter, and CM here, Alejandro. And here is our God, Jay himself, chat. <laughs> Oh my lord, Jay is amazing, Chad. He is our um, director, head of staff, chief, a producer, everything. He is all that we need. And and chef too, because you know what he did this ball? He cooked. He is a chef. His mic was really low. And the reason on, they uh, put his mic really low, um, which I, in my opinion, was a, uh, they shouldn't have done this, but their reasoning behind his mic being low is because they wanted people to focus more on the English. Um, I think that is not a very good excuse, and I thought it was really, uh, I don't know, maybe a little rude-ish, disrespectful to lower the, uh, his microphone. So for next time, I hope they keep him up, but no, I like don't think anybody anywhere would have mind if his microphone was louder. And I'm seeing louder. Nobody would like have said it. Let's go. Why is his mic so loud? Why is his mic loud? Nobody would have complained. So I think that was not okay, a very good decision. And but you know, it is what it is. Minus happens. one DKP. Uh, it was quite a shock. Yeah. Um, every Britain details of this castle was just um, blowing him away. And, um, so um, he's right here talking about the 10 year anniversary. He is like uh, showing um, off that uh, the first couple of like five hours is him basically talking about how Hyderabad is filmed in the actual in, in France. Um, <laughs> in the actual Hyderabad in the actual Heidel. Which, um, honestly, I think they took too much time on this. It's good for people who like this, but for people who are a bit more casual and stuff, we don't really care where the hide ball is. We just want you to drop the balls in our mouth. But so I they moved on exactly to tell us our first reward. The press conference literally opened with a banger. So if you and are- so the first gift for this hide ball begins with a special gift from Mr. Hi uh, Dr. Heidel. It starts with two hammers. Two? <laughs> That's two right. hammers of loyalty already. That's right. Two hammers of loyalty. So if you're a BDO player that hasn't really tuned in to Black Desert for a long time, you get two free taps of your um, out of your armor, your weapons. They started off the press conference with two hammers, dude, which is okay. huge. Okay, hold on. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's uh, get back to the keynote, Jay. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of the keynote, so two hammers. I remember what you said at last year's Calfian Ball. You they um, showed awesome. this map off at the very beginning and said they will talk about this later on. This is the initial launch map of the game. I think this is um, Valencia over here or Medaya, and this was like the plans. This is um, um, over here was Velia. So they now, talked about map, this a little bit and that they're going to show it off ball. later. In and then they also showed off Land of the Morning oh, Light. Awesome. They went off to show this content that is happening pretty soon, actually. I believe this one is in July and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But I think this is coming out July 20, no, July 10. I think I think around that time I could have the dates wrong. We'll we'll figure it out later on. I'll give you a better date analysis later. No, the gateway to the capital. Yeah. 
So they showed off the Land the of the Morning Light, which is a, a Land of the Morning Light Part 2, which is coming out pretty soon. Uh, I'll tell you guys the official date, just in case I, I forgot here. So they went on and presented um, Land of the Morning Light 2, with uh, showing you a little brief introduction to some of the bosses. Uh, thank you for, um, liking, uh, for <laughs> right here in this beginning cutscene, uh, you can see the one yep. of the bosses. This is going to be one of the bosses. Which is two two girls you end up fighting, or two women, and then this is another boss right here that you will ultimately face, um, kind of like what they have right now, boss shrines. But instead, this time around, it's a group play. It's not single boss shrine anymore. With Land of the Morning Light Two, they are introducing group fight similar to raids you can call it a raid or whatever or like a guardian raid where you guys are teaming up with your friends to take on weekly bosses and um, you get added bonus for doing it in a guild with your guild members you can do it with your friends you don't have to be in the same guild but if your whole guild is doing it and you get uh, added rewards for it and then they have like a point system. The person that is more helpful in the guild gets upvoted by the by the people in the guild. They're trying to make guild a bit more social, a bit more interactions between players. And um, I believe you'd still be able to re-enter and help your friends if they haven't cleared it. I do need a little bit more clarification on this. I'm not sure, but I do think that they mentioned it. Um, so if I cleared it, for example, and one of my um, friends wanted help, I could go help them. And yes, your gear does play a role in this. Unlike the boss shrines part one, where you could do a single and they don't let you use your actual gear. In this Land of the Morning Light 2, you will be able to use your f uh, gear to the full extent. So you can help people that are not that greatly geared uh, with the mechanics and beat the fights. There will be a certain amount of revives during the fight as well. So in case one of your lower team members get downed, they'll be able to um, revive. They have a, like a, a certain number. Of this. So there's, let's say there's three. Three revives per fight. Um, uh, this that's just an example um so you'll be able to go through that with your friends this time around which is really good more group content you know i can already see myself carrying um my mods shrimp and um zen and you know and we got we, we got this so they got a, quite a few bosses for this uh, they then went on and showed off a little trailer, like a little story. By the way, uh, link and down below to the actual conference so you guys can see it at your own pace. So you guys don't have some white haired, blue eyed VTuber talking over your stuff. That will be linked in the, in the description. So they will, they talk about how they're introducing new manners. Oh, by the way, it's a real life depiction uh, or in-game depiction of real life Seoul in Korea, right? Or some, what did, what did they call that place? It, it's based off um, real life, this, this time basically. It's based off real life. Yeah. Let's see. Um, our ancient capital. The Jungle ancient Palace. capital. With the Cultural Heritage Administration's help, we... So let's let's skip a little bit uh, more. Just as they showed a little bit of the boss fights um, here. So if, again, if you want to see it down below, they talked about how the new land has a couple of um, a uh, pets out there and things like you can it. interact with, like the dogs from the Land of the Morning Light. So they have this guy right here. You can interact with him some random NPCs out in the open world and they give you certain things, questing and stuff. Here they're going to show a bunny that you run into as well. So you could kill these Doka Bees. You see how he kicked that little fucker in the face? So here's a little bunny as well. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing they're going to have like puzzles in the open world. You know, something that I would like to see in Black Desert. This is just a, a, a take. Every time they introduce a new area, it would be nice if they introduce little puzzles and stuff like Genshin and Wuthering Waves. That way you can explore the whole land and get like pearls. Wouldn't that be nice if when they introduce a new 
continent, a new region. They introduce puzzles, chests, and stuff all around every corner. And when you complete them, you get pearls, like five pearls in total of like 120 chests in the world. And you get like five pearls for every chest that you find. That would be pretty good. It's a, a good way for free to players, free to play players to get um, campsites and all this stuff around, you know, stuff that typically requires you to swipe for, you can get acquired for free. I think that's, I think that would be genius. And the feel I, I toot my own horn for this. Next time, Pearl Abyss, steal that idea. That would be really good. Of adventuring through Huanghe province with these interactions. Yeah. Also, puzzles, you know no. Um, well, they can have like combat things. They can have different things. They can have puzzle quests. They can have combat. They can have chasing this bunny. When you catch the bunny, he spawns a chest. Just a lot of different things. You can make it unique and original. But my main point is introducing ways where you can get secret little, uh, little secrets here and there for pearls. Yeah. Princess of the Fallen Kingdom, right? As you progress through the collection of tales, adventurers who love and play as Tamer will encounter meaningful content for her. We hope you look forward to it. Yeah, as long as it's not, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, as long as it's not intertwined with the main story, uh, where it's additional content that you can do by exploring the new region. Because also, a lot of people don't even go around exploring the new region because they just want to get through the fun, right? They want to get to the combat. So a good way to introduce stuff into the game so people can actually see the new region and how beautiful it's developed, introduce certain things that incentivizes people to explore. <laughs> Tamer, let's go. GM, yeah. that was pretty good, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, Jim Laffy's acting. Okay, so was, there they uh, showed off a little bit of um, uh, things. Here they talk more about the bosses story. or this stories. Oh, they're gonna have more stories. And apparently, chat for the Land of the Morning Light 2, the stories will be longer. The story will be longer for Land of the Morning Light 2. So, everybody who complained about Land of the Morning Light 2 and how you wanted to Let just skip Mendoza through it, uh, about that. Lutiri also locks onto the weakest adventurer with precise aim right at the start of the battle. So you hear they talk a little bit about the mechanics. So for this particular boss here, he says that when five people enter there, the this boss is going to particularly target the 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 weakest member of that party, and he will continue targeting them throughout the whole fight. So this is kind of a good mechanic it kind of lets you play around with this intentionally probably even lowering your stats so a player can get targeted and just kite and run around so you can kind of help your friend i like this and, and hopefully they introduce the like way better mechanics as well to kind of make these boss fights a little bit more exciting than just brain dead hack right, and slash yeah Tutti unleashes a powerful that would be really nice. So they talk a little bit about mechanics here and there. An they talk about what the new buffs will, will do for the, the new region. The sun aura. Um, the sun aura. So here we go. Like so this is now your sun, moon, and earth auras. When you equip yourself with sun, I believe, it triggers CCs and specific situations. Moon increases revival counts within the party. So remember how I told you earlier, and as an example, you'll have three revives. While increasing, uh, doing moon, you probably have increased revival for your party. And then Earth summons a set of number of HP recovery the orbs. The These are things to help you in your increase the number of device, in your journey. Lastly, the and I do think system. that they have two difficulties. Unlike solo boss shrines, you'll have two difficulties. You will have a normal and a diff and a more the difficult one. Aiding the party's normal and hard. Adventurers can mix and match these three orders based on playstyle. With the yeah. characteristics before engaging in so they talk a little bit more about that they talk about a new life skill by the way they do mention a new life skill or a life skill-esque thing with managing town or something um, be combined and sold in balance this right here is about nodes or something i didn't quite understand this again link in the description 47 minutes in they talk about um this for a decent amount of silver while others may serve as ingredients for crafting their items. I, I didn't really understand it. Honestly, I'm a player that doesn't really care about that much. They talked about the new weapons. New weapons are being weapon introduced to Black Desert Online. The new best in slot weapons. 
They talked about them and how you'll be able to keep the aura of your weapons even if you swap to a different skin or something. You'll still keep the aura. Um, they, in, they also talked about three different ways to acquire the weapon. There are no current plans for a sub weapon version, but this will be considered. Only two weapons, main and awakening. Sub weapon is not included, and they might there bring it up in the future, but right now, only two weapons. Weapon. New... So these are the methods, the chat. Star, the primordial flame. This method of combining the pen black star weapon. This is the first method of acquiring that. It's combining your pen, pen black star weapon with a primordial flame. With a new item, maybe most familiar to veteran adventurers. Yet acquiring the primordial flame will be challenging. Acquiring the pr uh, primordial flame will be challenging. The second method involves combining two pen black star weapons. Basically, the second method is combining two black star weapons. But hold up, chat. Hold up, YouTube. They are giving everybody a free pen black star. So if you are a new player or somebody who is a bit more casual and you never got one pen black star because you're tired of failing and you gave up on the game, well, guess what? If you install today, by the time you watch this video, you will get your pen black star. Uh, but by the time you watch this video, you, you could log in and get your pen black star. If not, wait for the next maintenance, but you should have the pen black star. A free pen black star. There's going to be some minimum requirements, probably, and they didn't announce the requirements, but it's probably going to have you do something like, uh, if you played the game for like 100 hours, if you played the game for 100 hours, you're level 60, and you completed the Valencia 1 quest line, blah, 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 blah. Something very trivial um, that they're going to require from you, but it's bare minimum. I don't think it's going to be strenuous or some hard process. You can literally get that with it super easy. Uh, for your pen black star and if you're a veteran and you're like well, well i already have a pen black star why would i want another one because this is the second method of getting the new best in slot weapon is but combining the free pen black star they give you or any pen black star with another pen black star to get the new one two pen black stars become one sovereign no additional materials are required no additional materials are required. This is, for a lot of us veteran players, this is a free transition to the new best in slot weapon. This is easy. So that means that whenever the new weapon comes out, I already have one of the two weapons. That is juiced. The final method involves combining a pen black star weapon with a boss weapon at half as level 20. You hear that? And the third mes method to c getting the new weapon is combining a boss weapon along with another new item, the gem. That is plus 20 Kafras and a new item called the Gem of Twilight. Of Twilight. The Gem of Twilight will also be obtainable from the main content. There you go, chat. A pen black star weapon plus a Kafra 20 weapon plus a Gem of Twilight. But considering the value of the materials involved, this method would be the most expensive of them all. You put a lot of thought in- See that? This, will, this is going to be the most expensive method, but hey. It's still a 100% a guaranteed method. In the of the on one hand, you want to preserve the value of the painstakingly earned pen black star weapons. Yeah. On the other this one is the more um, expensive method, but it's also the 100% guaranteed. You don't have to gamble. You don't have to do any of that. You just buy all the things up off the market, and it's probably going to take you a little bit while, a little while to get everything, but it's a third option. And some people, you know, believe it or not, some people opt for this option. They don't want to do the whole RNG and gambling process. You want to preserve the value of the painstakingly earned pen black star weapons. On the other, though these are to become the highest grade weapons, we didn't yeah. want to make them too difficult to obtain. Thus, we came to offer free crafting methods, which we hope will suit the different playstyles of all our adventures. Next, we'll be going over the features of the Sovereign weapon. Unlike other weapons, the Sovereign will only have 10 enhancement levels. Let's see, right now they talk about more about the Sovereign weapon and how it has it. 10 enhancement levels and the enhancement levels are going to be introduced later the materials you need for Sorry. it so they go over this a little bit um again the video is going to be linked in the bottom of this youtube video and the description don't forget to comment like and subscribe yeah so they go uh, um and talk about how you will also be able to choose 
reform your weapon effects with items uh, with um, uh, stats like AP plus three, evasion plus eight, HP plus 200, critical hit damage, accuracy, damage reduction, critical hit rate, and black spirit recovery. You'll be able to choose five stat bonuses that you want on your weapon. Um, and you can that's pretty nice, here. man. We already know which ones we're going to use, right? We're probably most likely going to be using AP plus three, critical hit damage, accuracy, critical hit rate, and honestly, anything else can doesn't really matter. If you're a pve -er, if you're a pve -er and your main focus is PBE, AP plus three, critical hit damage, accuracy, critical hit rate, and probably Black Spirit Rage Recovery. If you are a pve -er. if you are trying to be more PVP, you're probably going to opt for, it depends on what job you are, maybe accuracy, um, evasion, AP plus three, max HP, and damage reduction. Well, no, critical hit rate, probably. Weapon. Yeah. To apply these effects, you will need separate refining materials. Some of the more core effects, such as extra So these are some other stuff as well. HP damage reduction, Ignore accuracy. resistance, blah, 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 blah. Back attack, attack damage. Air attack damage! Oh, we know what we're going for. More unique effects will require special reform stones, which will be hard. Oh, so some of the other effects, the more unique um, effects, will require a unique reform stone. To and thus add to their rarity. In summary, core effects are designed to be easily accessible for adventurers, freely customizable to suit their respective playstyles. While unique effects, you'll be able to, to customize your stuff and effort in collecting each rare trait to really stick out from their peers. Do note that these effects will continue to be added post-release. Oh, that's nice. So they're going to continue to add more effects. As the game um, progress, the Black Star weapons special visual effects are attached depending on their enhancement level. Yeah. A pen, a dim lighting effect will appear, and an so this is also something they're talking about. Just like a Black Star, the glow gets bigger once um, you enhance it higher. A more intense visual effect will be noticeable. I still think they need to increase this. I'm not gonna lie. I think I need a bigger glow. It's cool that they're not trying to overcome um, the player with a bunch of effects, but I think it's something cool that a player can show off the level of their weapons by how big their glow. This is kind of like going from a three inch penis to like a four inch penis. I need a, a 12 inch. I'm just saying. No matter how Let me show that shit off. Might be, they are bound to grow stale over time. Keep things fresh, it so Keep, the give it big and, and let us toggle it. Effects. If we don't want to show it off, if we don't want to show it off, let us toggle it. You know, if we want to grind it, we don't want all the effects on. Give us the option to toggle the effect off if we want or keep it on. Dude, this looks sick, though. Doesn't this look sick, the Draconia weapons with the glow? Oh, my lord. Even if you change appearances, the weapon's visual effect will remain. Of course, if you prefer the original look, you'll be able to toggle the effect as you please. There you go, chat. You can go back and forth on your uh, stuff. They also talk about... Um, I mean, these are the first new weapons. First new weapons after, what was it, five years, they said? We made it so that Look at this screen. One. This wallpaper looks so good. Adventurous I'm going to need to download this wallpaper. Put it out. Yeah, pull this weapon okay, so wallpaper out. That's right. Last year, we received a dream horse and ten... Black Star weapons. Here's the announcement, sure chat. Here is the announcement. As well to our adventurers. So this year, with the Land of the Morning Light Soul and the introduction of the top tier yeah. sovereign weapons, yeah. we hoped veteran adventurers can quickly craft and use the new gear and new adventurers can grow more effectively in that spirit to all adventurers. We will give you a pen Black Star <laughs> weapon. A free pen black star weapon for everybody. Oh my lord. Wait, 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 wait. What are you giving? Head. Wait, what? Alright, guys, it's official. We will give you all adventures a pen black star weapon. That's for real. Pretty nice, dude. A pen black that's star. That's a big W. Are you sure that's okay? Okay, so right here they went and talked about the music, um, and they showed off a, a little trailer. Um, Core server season one. Oh, this is another one. This has me um, excited. 
Um, here we go, YouTube. They're introducing hardcore season server season one. The rules are simple. Let's listen to this chat. Let's listen to this. The rules are simple. You create a hardcore server character to play on the server. You begin at level 60 and yeah. can only use the provided. Okay, so you begin at level 60. I did gear, which have a 20, 30, 20, 80. You can only equip the provided gear of AP 230 and DP 280. Gear score. These can be relatively easily enhanced up to around 260 to 300. Okay. You can use recovery potions, but foods and elixirs will not be available. Okay, recovery potions are yes. Food or elixirs, no. This is big, actually. You cannot see each other's family names, and both party and chat functions are disabled. Also oh my god, I don't have to read some greasy nerd talking about how I win because I'm a mystic. Oh my god, thank god, no chat enabled, no greasy nerds um, raging in chat. No parties, if you're in a guild, sorry, tough luck, your 20 other guild members cannot come and help you, you pathetic loser who needs 20 other people to help you, PvP. You gotta do it on your own, bro. No parties, no nothing. If you ain't good enough, get out these streets, man. So PvP is always activated. So you always active chat. You can attack anyone. No PvP restrictions. Without restrictions. And what's more, once you die, it's over. That's the basic gist of it. Oh. Except that's not true. <laughs> oh, and don't worry. Your character isn't deleted. You're shipped away to a cell where you will need rest points in order to escape. Okay, so you do not die forever, uh, which I think would have been better if you died forever, but you know what, let's, let's play along with this. So what happens now, if you do die in PvP, you get sent to jail. Your character does not get deleted, you just get sent to jail where you need to accumulate points to get out of jail. It will take a few days to get enough points. Few days? Are they talking about in-game days or like real life days? Or you can fight other inmates in 1v1 bouts to take points from them. Oh, you'll be able to duel people in jail. You'll be able to duel people in prison to take away their points so you can get out of jail faster. We're planning to operate the hardcore server in seasons with a special ranking system. The longer you survive or the fewer times you die than others, the higher you rank. Okay, so that is pretty interesting so the more you kill people i guess the longer you survive the higher you are going to be on the rankings the more fights you win die less than others and once the season is over we want to give special rewards for your rank character effects like stormtrooper that last until the next season Ooh. or exclusive titles with new colors this hard Ooh. Core server is for those tired of constant gear upgrades to allow you to focus solely on gameplay. I like this. This is the mode that has me the most excited. This is something fresh, something cool that I think the game needed for a while. So this is basically a full blitz, uh, just full blitz. If you are a PvP enjoyer, there is no reason why you wouldn't enjoy this PvP. The only reason you would not enjoy it is if you are a pit, a bitch who likes to party up with other people to gank on one person, pussy, or you are a bitch who is not skilled at PvP and you need to rely on your gear. If you're neither of those, you would really like this hardcore C uh, PvP thing. Why wouldn't you? It literally is PvP. without worrying about gear. 
we will provide more details when we update the content. More details, and I will be covering those details, chat, later when they release more information. That is all they showed uh, for this hardcore server season thing. I don't know. Could you create multiple accounts so you can just join that season thing? Are they IP banned, IP blocked? Are you going to be able to do this, do that? Is it daily? Um, uh, point reset what, when is their point reset i don't know more information about that later on i really like this though i think this is a very good idea and something that can really bring um a lot of hardcore PvP pvpers back to the game if they've left or something because it doesn't it doesn't seem like you're gonna need to grind hours for gear for this it just seems like a fun pvp thing that you can do and once you die here just go back to the to the other character to your real character and go grind you know accumulate points and then come back once all your points are accumulated and try to get more rankings i i, I think this is great dude next is on dekia's lantern tier 2 and new accessories should be able to kill your guilds too so people don't have and they and that is going to be the case uh, i believe they will adapt the same thing from the Arsha C um, server where you can kill your own guildies and I do think they're going to introduce that as well and I really like that I mean that's still not going to stop people from grouping up and ganking on people you will probably still see a bunch of the sweaty nerds uh, coordinating their attacks via discord that's going to happen and you really can't eliminate that but as long as there's friendly fire and stuff um yeah you hey take the chances again it's only so much you can do you probably won't be able to eliminate coordinated attacks by guilds and stuff probably the bigger guilds in the game like cho nation um you know black rose or family they're probably still going to be the top dogs not because they're um they gank on people they're probably really guild uh geared um skilled players in general but you will still be able to coordinate stuff. Yeah. My stun traps are ready. Alongside the land of the moonlight. You can't really, you can't really do anything like that, that. Streamers gonna get ganked? Yes. Streamers are more more likely going to be the biggest targets because they're gonna get stream sniped. But you know what? This is my take on this. Who gives a fuck? You know? If I get ganked because I'm a streamer give a fuck it's pvp man it's supposed to be fun i'm i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to this mode it's it is what it is if i get ganked for my first oh, like 30 minutes in the game oh well it is what it is Monster zones. it comes with the Since territory initial development the kills lantern was designed to allow adventurers to choose their own difficulty setting it apart from elder with the upcoming patch you will be able to activate the kills yeah. too also the kills lantern will be available seems like content zones. yeah i'm These gonna use it as an opportunity for content sharp. so they're adding dekia monster zone tier 2 as well chat we're not going to spend too much time here um dekia zone tier 2 which is supposed to be more difficult than the dekia that we have now for the real hardcore um PBEers out there. So we have guild PVP tier. It's not accumulated fame, but rather determined. Oh, this is about the guild. You'll be able to change your guild and what your guild focuses on by enabling um, your PVP uh, guild or PVE guild or life skilling guild. You'll be able to recruit members a lot and easier all guilds that have PvP while filtering. While participation is important, guilds with high skill and teamwork will form the top tier, enhancing their fame in the Black Desert world. The accumulated tier will affect not only the overall benefits for the guild and its members, but also yeah. affect various systems. One example is its use as MMR for noting. So there's new, uh, there's going to be MMR systems for node wars and conquest, conquest wars. wars. Now, guilds with high PvP tiers can only participate in node wars of certain. This is this is a W, by the way. Guilds that are well coordinated, that are well established, well PvP guilds uh, that have been in the game for a long time, will be set at a higher MMR, where they will not be able to go down and bully the smaller, newer tiers guilds. Cannot participate in lower tiers. The strong will compete with other strong guilds in the same for weaker guilds. This, this is pretty good. And this is something they should have had a long time ago. I think if your guild is a seasoned guild and you know how to, even if there is, here's the thing. Well, people's defense is going to be like, well, Allie, they already have a cap. Everybody's capped. So it doesn't matter. No, it does matter. You fucking 
poop brain, it does matter because somebody who has, who is established with the PPP scene has better communication, has better shot calling, has better fucking team play. They are just way better than a new guild coming into the game that doesn't know anything about PPP really. You can't really put a guild that knows what they're doing versus a new guild or a, a, a casual guild. That just is a whole different ball uh, park. It's a whole different game. So this is really good. An MMR system is really creates good. Creates a clear hierarchy, promoting growth through promotion and regulation, systematizing the growth of all guilds. As such, we aim to provide honor My rewards. guilds have been matched with 2K plus guild, league guild while under 1K. It's based on... Oh, well, you know, it's not going to work perfectly. Um, and there's still going to be some issues and some errors and some people that probably even leave their big juicy guilds to join a smaller guild just so they can take advantage of the casual guilds or the not so sweaty guilds. That's always going to happen, but you can only try your so much. Tears. Yeah. High tier guilds will have exclusive seals engraved on their guild and family names. And when they chat on the server or world, there will be visual effects to make them appear more dignified. The thing is that smurfing is going to happen and there are going to be guilds that are going to take advantage of this. But hey, what do you want them to do? Not do anything about it? Not try new solutions? The first thing that BDO players do is that they bitch that they're not doing anything. But then when they decide to do something and try to think outside the box, then you're complaining that, you know, oh, they're going to be cheating and cheaters still. It's like, hey, at least they're trying something. Also, at last year's Calfee and Bali revealed the Maybe not be the right way. Achieving the top PvP tier but will you know, the right they're, to they're the gonna dragon. get there. The and this dragon, by the way, is for PvP so far. I believe somebody who owns um, a castle by winning a siege will be able to get a guild black dragon. Green. Dude, that's so sick. Hopefully they expand on this and let us raise our own dragons by feeding our dragons certain things to change its colors. Uh, that would be nice if they added, th this is just me, another suggestion to Pearl Abyss. Oh, how to tame your dragon or growing a dragon. Get a little egg, grow it in your farm, feed it certain fruits and shit that changes its color, changes its stats, its speed, its power, its this and that. Kind of like a chocobo raising in Final Fantasy XIV. It would be nice if they, later on they introduce a system like that. I would personally like something like that. The girl in me wants that. System based on guild traits and fame is not intended to incite vague competition. As explained earlier, we hope that all guild members- Feeding mobs to dragons too. Maybe taking your egg in your inventory while you fight certain monsters changes what abilities the monster, will, the dragon will grow to have later on. Members will advance toward yeah. their goals together and that new adventurers will enjoy related content together, allowing them to adapt more quickly to our world of Black Desert. Today, I only explained the PvP trait in tier, but I will also explain the PvE and life aspects before the update. So please look forward to it. Oh, and speaking of which, we recently adjusted skill hit counts, and we are also working on additional optimizations. Ooh, this involves changing the additional optimization. More optimization coming to BDO. Affecting gameplay. This involves changing the internal structure without affecting gameplay. It's probably a graphics engine overhaul. Once completed, it will certainly improve things, so we're going to complete this task. Along with this work, we also plan to resume the War of the Roses. We hope you'll look forward to that as well. Next up, we have summer events and an exclusive outfit. We introduced the Sea Palace along with Termion last year. Sadly, we weren't Ooh, able to prepare oh, a new Oh, this is one of my favorite parts. Year, They're introducing... As you know, the Termion region has Papus and Otters, and the Sea Palace has Earfolk and Shelfolk. So this time, you'll be able to visit both regions, and all four races will be brought a together. A new swimwear. Earfolk and Shelfolk will take trips to Termion. Probably really net code, yeah, they're, they're probably doing a bunch of stuff, stuff which is really good, man. Together. We prepared many events, and we hope you look forward to them. Next, we have this summer's new outfit. The name of this outfit is Bataka. The RT prepared more than usual for this one. While the outfit has one main design, we added some variations for an extra layer of customization. Although we can dye outfits Look at this, dude. Oh my god. The the, the outfit team in Black De um, Desert has been getting so many Ws, dude. This is great, man. We just want man. more options. We hope you enjoy this variety and style. Some ideas were borrowed from our merchandise, such as the Papu logo, which give it a distinct Black Desert touch. This outfit also has a cape on-off feature. Our male characters went shirtless in too many of our summer outfits, so we tried to make their outfit a bit less revealing this time. For the female characters, they will be wearing a shirt on top of a bikini, which also have a cape on-off feature. Adventurers have been awaiting a refreshing bikini look for the summer, Damn. and this outfit definitely answers cook, those calls. Cook, man, cook. Additionally, through the Pearl Shop, you'll be able to purchase dances and other accessories such as sunglasses and hats. See, wait, 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 wait. We're not just gonna leave this section. Such as 
We're not, we're not leaving this section. Look what he said. Additionally, through the pearl shop, you will be able to purchase dances. Additionally, through the pearl shop, you'll be able to purchase dances and other accessories such as sunglasses and hats, which will be perfect for the summer as Black Desert celebrates its dances, bro. 10th anniversary. We've it's been 10 years and tell me why Black Desert is the only MMO that doesn't have dances in it. It's 10 years, dude. MMOs are about the social experience, about being social with other people, and you ain't got the the pure the b basic fundamental a uh, dance, dude. Yeah. And you know what their reason behind not introducing dances in the past was because they said it didn't fit their world. What? But a Bugatti collaboration fits your world, bro? What in the hell? How does a Bugatti collab fit your world? Prepared but a dance doesn't. Like, did it not dance in medieval times or something? What kind of fucking miserable world were you part of that dancing wasn't a thing? Extra special summer event and outfit. We hope you enjoy it and have fun. That's all we have prepared for you Make today. it make sense. The today, we are still diligently working on the quality of life improvements, both small and large updates, including things mentioned at last year's Calfion Ball. We are doing our best to bring these things to our adventurers. So we yeah. really hope that you'll enjoy our Land of the Morning Light Soul content that we are working so, so hard yeah, on. So yeah, this uh, they're going to tell us the dates, chat. Soon they're going to reveal okay. the dates for everything. <laughs> yeah. So here is a little bit more of those um, outfits. Oh my lord. We tried Bam. to give this a uh, summer concept that also fitted a more modern feel. It's a type of outfit that evokes a cool summer. And uh, as said in the video, the swimwear in the summer's outfit is not like a current underwear style, but a normal outfit. That's has pretty nice, feature. dude. And we're also working on a shine version, which will have a little bit of different design. Okay. Yeah. I and like one it. more thing. We're also preparing the outfit that matches our game perfectly and that you have all been eagerly waiting for. Oh, oh, boss. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we've a lot of thought outfits lately, and we know many adventurers love outfits and see them as a majorly important part of Black Desert. And outfits like Academia Primavera and the latest Memento Mori were outfits with yeah. a modern feel. And These new outfits really have enjoyed. been so and good of course, for the, the game. thing is wearing the outfits while playing the game and having fun. So moving forward, be it outfits with historical backgrounds or modernized outfits, we will continue to develop and design outfits that make your gameplay more enjoyable. We hope yeah. that you continue uh, to choose the outfits that suit you and that you can have fun wearing while playing. Well, even when you've been developing Land of the Morning Ice Soul, you've also been preparing a bunch of updates for this summer as well. Um, I don't really care about the summer updates chat, so we're going to continue to move here Um, to, to check out about, uh, console. Yeah, we skipped through console stuff because, like, nobody cares. So here Six. is the, the release Jordan. date chat. Jordine Saga, which is a re um remastered version of, I believe, Heidel Story. Heidel through Calfion Journey. So they're going to re- um, remaster the storyline called Jordan Saga which is coming out on June 26 globally and on July 10th for console Arena of Solaire season global Saga, release April. July 3rd my birthday by the way come by my stream on July 3rd it's a 24 hour stream well, we'll be live for all service regions and Jordan Saga will also be updated to console on July 10th and the new class comes out on July 3rd, July 3rd as well waiting. on my birthday the regular season of Arena of Solaire will be coming yeah as this is this will be the first season since the headcount reduction the patch uh, the effects of equipment and the balances plan to change and the regular season of aos will be held at the same time for the and one more thing of course there's one more thing global july 3rd my birthday will be the new class so chat globally coming on july 3rd but i'll come back to it later <laughs> on july 10th the new summer outfit Badaka is planned to be released new outfit july 10th then on July 14th, what you've all been waiting for. War of the Roses. Uh. Based on your feedback during the preseason, new commander skills have been added, rule changes, and improvements to the resurrection system. Yeah. The Sea Palace and. Oh, by the way, the free pen Black Star is going to be on June 26th. Pyramid Collapse Summer event is set to start on July 24th. And as for the Land of Morning Light Summer event, July 24th. So and today, the Land of the Morning Light Part 2 is August 7th. Is planned to be released in Korea on August 7th. Uh, August 7th. 
yeah. then to global service after uh, localization is complete. For free. The current staff, yes. This to be pen, for free for pen users. black star. Due to the large scale of solid dates, we ask for your understanding about the yeah. latest release to global adventures. We will ensure to pay uh, close attention to high quality localization. We hope you understand. Uh -huh. So there you go, chat. The road Additionally, map. Additionally, the, the guild system mentioned in the commentary video, uh, Tech Tier Slanted Tier 2, Acidal Accessories, and the hardcore yeah. server will all be updated um, sequentially in all regions after. The oh the my system. lord! And that's all for the summer uh, update schedule. We will do our best working on it. Oh, and here, <laughs> chat, like they talked a little bit more about this map very they well, showed us at the very beginning. Before. Remember this decade. map? So many memories. That they showed us at the very beginning? This was uh, BDO, how it started. Their place. vision. We would but what's now, what's Valencia? they talk about the Our future Valencia. of Black we Desert. The next 10 years of your favorite MMO. We as developers did pretty much the same thing. Thinking and discussing the kind of fun adventures we can make in the next new region. And after revealing our results... Here we go. Here we go, chat. And let's skip ahead. Of the unreleased regions. So right here, the map looks a little bit interesting. We have more of the winter stuff being filled out. And here on the north, we have a bit more landscape. We are shrouded with fogs. The region below the mountain of Eternal Winter, which some of you call Eternal Winter 2, and the region north of Valencia, known as Demon Land. Demon Land, brief. chat. This is Demon Land on top. So right now, we're going to check out the new winter the area, winter part two. two. Please show the images first. Here are some of the screens of what, what the winter the land uh, after the mountain of eternal winter. Officially named uh, Mountain of Dawnbreak. In this area, you'll follow the story of Kafras and challenge your limits in the ten, uh, in the hundredth floor dungeon. Yeah. Next up is Demonland. Uh, let's look at the screen. Here is Demonland, Chad. This is where I'm from. <laughs> Demon land. Oh my god, dude. This is demon land. Let them cook. I guess um, demon castle would, could be more fitting name. Yeah. Unlike any of the existing regions of video, we're designing the entire region to be a huge castle. You would... Uh, let's, let, let, let's hear him. Enter to different parts of the castle to face new and different combat mechanics and steadily conquer your way through it. Now, once you reach the demon line, yeah. the map will be clear. The world map will be clear of shrouded areas. Ooh. So, what comes after that? What comes? Me. What? We've been thinking about this for quite some time. And we've tried various methods to create an endless epic adventure. Uh -huh. We would venture out to sea, duck underground, and we even made a oh, new farm. So anyways, um, right here, he basically introduced um, the Winter uh, Mountain Part 2, which is coming out, and that they're working on, and this new land above Valencia called uh, Demon Land 2, which is, takes place in a big castle. And um, different floors, different corridors, different things. It's going to just be one giant castle. Um, and you'll be able to clear that. I believe at some point he mentioned that there's like a level 100 dungeon or something like that. With, um, I don't remember. But at some point, again, you can look through the VOD. Um, he said something about... Um, a level 100 um, tower mechanic or something like that. An endless dungeon. They, they mentioned it. I don't know what it's like, but I guess we're going to have to hear more information about that. And upcoming next, he talks about how the little map um, oh, used to look like and their vision, and they're going to introduce a new way to explore BDO in the future. Of all these attempts, the most outlandish was the Max. A completely different world. Connected by the magnet. I thought if they were going, we were going to go to space. I'm like, oh my god, they're going to announce BDO in space. Oh my god, I can't wait. This is because the Magnus is a gateway to parallel worlds. But the Magnus is just a gateway to another world. In other words. Or other timelines. It is a gateway to other realms. And now through the Magnus, we can travel back in time. 
The destination is. It's the Blackness of Well in thousands of years back in time. Next, please. What the? So this is the current BDO map. The world map you're seeing now is a few thousand years back in time, during the era of the Adana. Yeah. The first thing I noticed was the Valencian desert is covered in lush green. Yeah, there's a lot of green here, chat. Valencia is a desertous area. What does it mean? You probably noticed that the other regions are slightly different from what we know. Make it makes sense. That's right. We are preparing to embark on an adventure to this continent of the past with you. Maybe we're a little too far away to see. Shall we take a look a little closer? Yeah, zoom in. Alexa, this is the enhance. Point. This is the past. As you can what see in the past, Valencia was not a desert, but rather a vast green plain. During that time... So this is Valencia, where right now, the current game, we are in a desertous area. And in the past, a thousand years ago, it was a lush green forest. So we're going to be able to go back in time where the world is a little bit different. Yes, even um, they mention here that even places like Histria, where it's a dungeon uh, that you go through, is a little bit different. Perhaps history must have been not in ruins, perhaps akin to what we know as Parthenon Temple. The continents of the past may yeah. seem familiar to us, but they present a completely new world unfolding before us. What if an ancient city from North Jesus was where the here. Valencia now lies? Yeah. You'll be able to meet Jesus, talk to Jesus, Jesus the rub Jesus' the feet. Could they have been part of a continent like Atlantis? And how were Ator, Kutum, Rugon created, and who made them? And what about the Black yeah. Spirit? Where did they come from? And how did they settle in the world of Black Spirit? How? Why? The answers to all these questions are found in the era of Idana. Too many questions. Now, we aim to continue a completely new adventure unlike anything we've experienced before. To think we're going to experience the era of Idana from thousands of years ago. We have so much more story to uncover. So much story. More. I can't wait for the story. <laughs> However, some people may think, uh, some people may think that the story I shared seemed distant and unrelated. Yeah. That would be correct. It's a distant story. But as we celebrate the 10th anniversary of Practice of this year, I wanted to share with you the new and infinite, uh, infinite adventures that lie ahead. I hope that the story I introduced today has brought a bit of excitement yeah. to everyone, much like the image of the Practice of the World. It did, it did, it did. We still have so much more we want to show you. We will continue to do our best so that adventures like you can keep exploring yeah. with us. Thank wow. you, Mr. When we first J. mentioned Demon Land, I was so excited, but I was also wondering, where do we go next? Hmm. It turns out that our adventure never ends. And one day I looked to take a trip into Magnus and find myself ended up a thousand years ago in Valencia. But instead of a desert, it's a grassland. Hmm. <laughs> I really didn't expect that. Even though it's been 10 years since Black Desert launched, yeah. I'm really excited to see what the next 10 years holds. What do you think? We're excited for the next 10 years, everybody? Let's go! I'm excited! I'm excited, Chad! I need a new pair of panties. <laughs> wow, we've gone over so much today. But Jay, I think there was one thing that's still missing from everyone's bingo boards. Okay, uh YouTube, you might be wondering, what is my reaction to um, the new class, which they're about to show? But this is all I want to show here, that my reactions to the new class will be on a separate video again i like to thank everybody if you're watching this right now on youtube don't forget to comment like and subscribe um this is my favorite mmo and i'm glad i can still get to play and make little videos for you guys here and there so don't forget to comment like subscribe <gasps> tell me what was your favorite part about this whole um conference thing and um uh, yeah my new class reaction uh, video is going to be on youtube as well okay bye Okay, do we like that? And scene chat, cut it, cut it right. Is, is this still rolling? Um, I am cute.